A Karen buys the property next to my family's house and tries to destroy our orchard and cut off my cat's tail. So I destroy her life and cause her to lose that property along with $437,000 worth of debt. Here is how I got my sweet revenge. My great grandparents planted an orchard. It is now at least 120 years old. My grandparents and my parents were really proud of the peach trees growing in it and did their best to keep them in good health and well. We always threw a big party when the peaches were ready to be harvested and invited all of our friends and neighbors to it. I love those parties. The neighbors on the property to the south of our orchard were particularly fond of our peaches. They were a bunch of fine old people and me and the old man Sam were pretty good friends. He taught me a lot about woodworking with hand tools only and we had some great evenings in his workshop and we finished many a good whiskeys in there together. In return, he got a lot of fine peaches, marmalade, homemade peach liqueur, etc. Sadly, he died a good 10 years ago. Cancer is terrible. His wife followed soon after. Many suspected it was of a broken heart. They had no kids, so all of their property was left to the state, except his tools and his whiskey collection, which he had gifted me a few weeks before he died. In comes Karen. The name speaks for itself. The haircut, the attitude, the overall jerk personality, the whole deal. She bought the property off my late name. We hadn't had the kind of money to buy it at the time as we met some dire straits the years before and all of our savings were gone. The first thing she did before she actually moved in was go around and made demands of the neighbors on the surrounding properties. When it was finally our turn to listen to her gibberish, she told us that we needed to remove half of the trees as the leaves were blowing onto her property. We told her in a polite way that we won't comply to her demands as the orchard is a vital part of our family heritage slash tradition slash life and has been for at least 120 years. She was pissed, but did nothing for the time being. There are some things you need to know before I continue with the story. The workshop that I mentioned before was situated right at the border to our property. It was a small timber framed building at least 160 to 180 years old. The regulations in my state are pretty strict concerning old structures. Every structure over 100 years is protected and you need a special permission to tear it down. Failing to get this permission can lead to a hefty fine. To get the permission to build a new building, it has to be up to code and you have to ask ask your surrounding neighbors, but if they agree, you're good to go. Except there is one specialty in my country. You have to keep a certain distance to the border of the property to allow emergency services full access to your property. If one of these requirements isn't met, the building is illegal or at least only partially legal and can be actually ordered by a court to be torn down. This might come in handy later. So back to my Karen. After our first encounter with her, she did her best to pester the whole neighborhood. She got the neighbor's dog put down because he allegedly attacked her brat. It later turned out that she faked the attack that got the neighbor's dog put down. This dog was the sweetest and most innocent dog you could imagine. A Bernese mountain dog. Big, but a real teddy bear. Anyway, she later got us to stop doing our annual peach parties as she called the police every time for various reasons. Noise complaints. We had a band playing there in the afternoon. Our We lit a fire in a designated fire pit in the middle of our property. She called the ATF on us for allegedly making moonshine. My dad had a license to distill for our own consumption. In short, she was a real pain in the butt. And after three years, we decided it wasn't worth it to deal with various officers and law enforcement agencies every time we threw a party, and we decided to quit. After she had reached this goal, she resorted to pestering us to remove the orchard. We didn't cave in, and some of our things started getting really fishy. Somehow, the tires of our trucks got slashed, eggs got thrown on our farmhouse, our cat disappeared and resurfaced days later in rough condition. It looked like somebody had tried to cut off his tail. Don't worry, he healed up completely, but we actually couldn't prove that she did all of that. Then came the day when she made her biggest mistake. She had a company come in in sort of a secret operation and tear down the old woodworking workshop overnight. Two days later, they started building a big garage slash recreational center slash house right where the shop was, but she missed one fine detail, which got pretty important later on. She did not ask our permission, nor for the neighbors. After a short while, 
while, the trees right next to her property started to get sick. The leaves turned brown in the middle of summer and the branches started to die. We lost four trees right before we figured out what the cause was. Somebody had driven long copper nails into them. We had a suspicion but couldn't prove it. So we put up some trail cameras, perfectly legal as it was on our own property, and we caught her red handed. My dad confronted her. She apologized and my dad being the way too nice guy he is wanted to let her get off the hook but not me. The nail she drove into our oldest tree was the final nail to her coffin. I started to investigate. I had some friends at the administration of our county and asked them to do some inquiries. It turns out that she didn't apply for the permission to tear down the old shop nor for the permission to build the new building. I did some further inquiries on the borderline of our property. It turned out the old the markers vanished over time and her building was about three feet on our property. After I had gathered all this information, I presented it to my parents. At first, they were reluctant as they didn't want to start a neighborhood clash, but after I recalled all the things she did to us and our neighbors and possibly our cat, they were in. So let the games begin. First, we called the authorities on her for tearing down a protected building and presented them with all the evidence we gathered. Then we called the building's authorities on her for building a building without permission, not up to code. And not only did she not keep the required distance on the property border, she also built on our property without our permission. Long story short, it turned out the workshop hasn't only been protected because of its age, but also because it was a historical landmark, which played a vital role in the conflict back in the 1860s. She got sued for this and had to pay a fine of $150,000. She further had to demolish her newly built building costing an additional $50,000 and fine for this too, about $83,000 and had to rebuild the workshop on her own expense, which was another whopping $154,000 as it had to be period correct up to the smallest detail, which means it had to be built with the correct materials, with the hand tools only and the correct dimensions. As you can imagine, paying professionals to build quite a large timber frame building only by hand gets expensive expensive pretty fast. So all in all, it cost her an equivalent of $437,000 plus further expenses as lawyers, etc. This caused her to go bankrupt and she had to sell the property in the end, which my parents bought, by the way. And the last thing I heard of her was that she moved back to the big city. And the best part was the peach parties are back and even more lit than ever. The Karen in this situation just couldn't be content. The whole situation starts with her trying to encroach on other people's properties before she even moved in. There's an old Seneca quote that says, Nothing to my way of thinking is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to just stop where he is and pass some time in his own company. And it seems like in this situation, it's the complete opposite of that. It is a very, very chaotic mind, not a well-ordered mind that leads the Karen to going through all of this in order to do what exactly? To assert her dominance over the neighbors? To what end? I mean, she's shoving these copper nails into the trees to kill the trees. And who knows what she actually did to the cat. But the cat, as I said here, was pretty roughed up. I visualize this whole area as being very spacious and rural. So it's kind of strange that once a year she would be that upset about this old tradition of them having a party for their peaches. So let me know how you would handle the situation. Do you think this went way too far or was it just right? Let me know down below. Am I the jerk for dropping a guy I was dating and his daughter off at a rental car place States away from home. Long story short, I'm a 27 year old female. I started seeing a 44 year old guy named Dave three years ago. I have two sons, nine and six, and he has one daughter, Anne, who's 17 years old. I booked a road trip for me and my sons roughly three months ago. A road trip consisting of roughly 26 hours worth of driving with stops in between. This is the first time I've ever been financially able to do much of anything with my children, so I went all out. I planned to stop at every place they had ever asked me to go, basically. I was beyond excited to surprise them with this trip. We got home four nights ago. A week before leaving, Dave decides he wants to go with me and bring Anne as a bonding experience. We do not live together and Anne has never liked me because I'm boring. She has said this to my face. So Dave thinks it will all be good. I didn't really want either of them to go, but I thought, eh, why not? This could be good for us. Boy, was I wrong. From the moment Anne got into my vehicle, she started complaining about 
absolutely everything. It was too crowded, too loud, we were taking too many stops, the boys were too annoying and needed to quiet the F down and chill out. We get a hotel nine hours in Pennsylvania. It's around 3 p.m. at this point. Dave asks if he can take a drive with Ann because she was getting irritated with the kids. I told him he could if he makes it quick because I needed to get dinner supplies. Three hours later, he shows back up. Him and Ann went out to eat. So I made a comment saying, you didn't think that we wanted to eat too? And Ann snaps back with, I don't think we asked. After comments like this for days, I finally snapped. My boys are now saying they just want to go home because several times Dave told my kids to be quiet because of his kids level of comfort. At this point, I haven't done anything with my kids because the queen would have a fit if we pulled off anywhere. And Dave at this point basically refused to let me drive despite me arguing in my car. So I snapped and I told him to pull the F over. And when he finally does, I drive to the nearest car rental and I tell them to get the F out of my car. Dave and Ann start flipping out. Ann says she isn't going to get into a car that has bed bugs. And Dave says he didn't want to take separate vehicles and didn't have enough money for a rental because the queen spent over $1,500 in four days. So I say, I don't believe I effing asked. And I take off. We were close to 800 miles from home. It took them four days to get home due to lack of money and needing to borrow money. Now I'm being told I'm a selfish B. Am I the jerk? It sounds like Dave is under Ann's thumb. And maybe he's trying to do that because he's in some sort of weird situation with Ann or a custody issue. But it sounds like he's complying with whatever Ann wants her reality to be. And he's imposing that reality on everyone around them, regardless of who it makes uncomfortable. Obviously, in retrospect, the best thing would have been is if the OP just said, no, you can't come. This is specifically for me and my boys. We've been planning this for a long time, but it must have felt so bittersweet to finally be able to financially do any of this and then have it all soured by the situation with Dave and Ann. The question is, why would they even really want to go in the first place? Maybe Dave just thought it was a cheap way to entertain his daughter who was annoyed with him. I mean, that's kind of what I'm reading from this whole situation, but I don't even know what you could spend $1,500 on in four days. I mean, even if you ate out every single meal, three meals a day, four days straight, 12 meals, you're not going to spend $1,500 unless you're going to some crazy fine dining places. So what else could you even spend that much money on? But with all that said, let me know what you would do if you're in this situation, jerk or not a jerk. Am I the jerk for blowing up at my husband for lying to me about my sister and her baby leaving when he actually kicked her out? My sister, who's 20 years old, got out of a terrible relationship and moved in with me and my husband and brought her five-month-old son. She's been dealing with a handful of issues from PPD to depression, I asked my husband if he'd be okay with her moving in and he said absolutely. Not just this, but he was the one who picked her up slash brought her home. She stayed for two weeks and helped her on the house. My husband started complaining about the baby crying, but a newborn baby is expected to cry, especially at night. He said it causes him stress, although I suggested he put on earbuds. He suddenly told me to forget it and so I did. Last week I had to go out of town to attend a friend's funeral without my husband. He said he wanted to stay with my sister to make sure she's okay. I returned home the next day and didn't find her or her baby home. My husband said she contacted a friend in another town and wanted to move with them and left that morning. He handed me a letter he claimed was from her. This felt so odd, especially after reading the letter. I called her phone many, many times, but it turned out my husband found it and said she must have left it behind. I was worried I had no means of contacting her to make sure she was okay. I contacted relatives, but they knew nothing. Yesterday, I got a call from an unknown number and it was her. We talked and she told me that she didn't leave on her own, but my husband kicked her out after telling her she was no longer welcome and she needed to take responsibility for her decisions. I was in shock. As she explained, she's not with a friend, but at a shelter and she has no money. I waited till he got home and I blew up at him. He admitted he faked the letter. He hid her phone 
phone and then argue that it's his house and he has a say, but he shouldn't have lied to me about my sister and caused her to be homeless. He said I was being unfair and wrong to lash out at him for wanting peace in his home. I went upstairs and refused to argue anymore. I told him I'm going to pick her up tomorrow and then he said he changed the locks while I'm gone so I wouldn't be allowed to bring her home. I'm thinking of going to a hotel but he kept saying I'm letting my sister affect our lives by prioritizing her but there's a baby involved, my nephew, and I cannot leave him homeless. I get that it's a house too but I don't see why he's so against her staying. Fast forwarding into the future, he returned home and we started arguing again. I couldn't take it anymore. I'm going to stay at a hotel for tonight and I'm leaving in an hour or so. He is wanting to talk again now but I'm incredibly overwhelmed and stressed out and need some time by myself. I don't care if he's going to change the locks or not. I'm working on meeting up with my sister as soon as possible so we could try to talk more openly about what happened and hopefully try to figure something out. So was I the jerk for blowing up at my husband for lying to me about my sister and her baby leaving when he actually kicked her out? This husband sounds so slimy. Not only did he wait for the OP to be out of town so that she couldn't do anything about it, he stole the sister's phone so she couldn't contact the OP? I mean, that is really twisted. The perplexing part is if the husband felt that he so clearly has the right to do this, why wouldn't he just do it in front of the OP in the open? He did it in a very sneaky, roundabout way. And then what do you think was going to happen? Of course, she's going to contact her sister eventually and figure this out. So he had no plan. He just thought, I'll get the baby and the sister out of the house for now. And then, eh. I'll figure it out later. The husband doesn't sound very smart or confident in his ability to actually be the one to make decisions in the household. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done this under the cover of night. He would have done it right out in the open. So if this was your significant other and they did this to your sibling, let me know how you would take it and jerk or not a jerk and why. And don't forget to subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit that bell to turn on notifications. And if you're a fan of podcasts, make sure you follow the Am I the Jerk podcast as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Next time.